In this tutorial in CyberLink Color Director, I'd like to give you some tips on working with the selection mask. This tool works best when either the camera or the object that you're working with are motionless. If they're in motion, the motion tracking mask will often do a better job. But there are occasions when this is useful. So let's apply it a little bit in this particular clip. What I'm going to do is uh, go to my, I have the clip on, on my storyboard at the bottom. And what I'd like to do is change the color of this wall and a little bit about the bluish reflection in the window. So what I'm going to do is move to the adjustment tab at the top. And then in the regional adjustment tools, I'll pick the first one on the left, which is called selection mask. I can have up to five masks at the same time. So we'll create two of them here. It defaults to a new one. And one thing I'm, I first need to do is just define the mask. Now I'm going to take this blue section here and I can yeah, actually click off the screen and I'll give it just four corners. I can make it any size I want and then click back on the original to close the mask. I'm going to move this over slightly. So what I'd like to do is change the color. It was a blue wall so we're going to go to a color replacement option. I'll click on the original color. We'll click on this solid color. Again, solid works easier. I'll take a new color. Let's change the wall to maybe a light green and click on OK. And now my wall has changed to green. When I go ahead and play the video, it works just great until I begin to see a little bit of camera motion. And right here, you see the camera begins to move. Well, you can adjust for that. So what I'm going to do is leave it here, and this will automatically do some keyframing for you. I'll move ahead by a couple of frames, and now when it begins, to, I begin to lose it, I can simply hold the color of the mask, the first one is red, drag it back a little bit on that frame, and then I move it over some more and we'll adjust it. It won't move very much in this particular clip, but I'll make some more frame motions, movements here, and keep it in frame. And so it takes a bit of work, as you can see, but it's not too onerous. And in a little bit, it will be out, actually out of frame. Okay, so now I have that changed to green for the duration of my clip. If I want to see what it did in setting, setting the keyframes, I click on the little clock at the very top, the third tab to the right of presets, and it will show me where I did some keyframing. If I enlarge it even more, I can see it better. Here is where we were setting some keyframes automatically. So I'll go ahead and close that window. And now if I go ahead and play this, we see that that segment of wall has been effectively changed from blue to green uh, for that segment of time. So that works. Let me give you another option. We'll do a second mask. To do that, I click on the down arrow on the left side by mask and click new. And it will, it will start a new mask that ignores the first one. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different kind of mask. I want to mask off this bluish color that I have in the window. And so what I'd like to do is instead of doing a color replacement, uh, I'd like to uh, change the saturation. We're going to turn the blue down inside the mask. and make it more of a white. 
and I'll probably I'm going to turn the yellow up a little bit I don't want to change the color of these uh, these uh, plants too much or they will look different from the arrangement over here but let's try that and now again I play the clip and it's still looking good in that, those frames there we're, we're still covered here and really I didn't have to do any significant keyframing on that simply because it, it didn't affect the other keyframe I did and it looks pretty good so now I've adjusted two things from the original let's do it side by side here's the original on the left Here's my modified one on the right. So I changed a couple of things by simply using the selection mask. Again, it works best if the camera doesn't move or if the uh, object you're masking doesn't move or someone doesn't move in front of it. Otherwise, you may want to use the motion tracking mask. But that's one of the tools that you have in CyberLink Color Director.